A few months ago, I picked up a Hogan HMD 500 mag drill off Craigslist for cheap. I figured it'd be reasonably easy to fix, and it would save me a lot of money rather than spending $1,500 to buy one new. Some of you might be wondering what a mag drill is. A mag drill is a portable drilling machine with a magnetic base. It can use twist drills, annular cutters, milling cutters, and other rotary cutters. With suitable bits, it can also tap threads, ream, and countersink. The seller showed me the unit with power. It just wouldn't run. He suggested maybe it was the motor, the brushes, maybe a switch. I was hoping it was an easy fix. After some basic testing, I discovered that one of the coils in the magnetic base was bad. So I emailed Hogan, hoping to buy one and was told that that part was no longer manufactured. Fearing I had a nice big doorstop, I decided to tear off the epoxy and take a look as to why the coil didn't work. And what I found was a manufacturing defect. A small piece of the magnet wire had hung out and over time had broken. Time to reverse engineer this magnet. I measured the ohms of the good coil, 116 and a half. I then stripped out all of the bad magnet wire and cleaned out the remaining epoxy from the cavity. Checking online, I found that 31 gauge magnet wire has a resistance of 130.1 ohms per thousand feet. Taking the measured resistance of 116.5 ohms and dividing that by 130.1 ohms and then multiplying that by 1,000 to represent feet, I come up with 895 and a half feet. I then ordered some 31 gauge uh, magnet wire from Temco online. Four ounces of magnet wire is 988 feet and costs about $8. To double check my math, I decided to weigh the wire and measured 104.5 grams or 3.69 ounces. To convert grams to ounces, simply divide the grams by 2835 to calculate the number of feet, I take 3.69 ounces, divide it by 4 ounces, and then multiply that by 988 feet. 911 feet is pretty close to 895. I then designed a new spool or bobbin in Fusion 360 and 3D printed it on the Form Labs resin printer. It fit like a glove. Perfect. Winding the coil turned out to be a lot easier than I had originally anticipated. I made a jig that went into the CNC lathe that would provide guidance and tension uh, for the wire as it was spooled onto the bobbin. I then programmed the machine uh, to move in and back out at the required uh, pitch or thickness of the wire to lay it down perfectly. This is the G-code program used to wind the coil. G32 is the command that normally is used for threading. In this case, we're moving in at the thickness of the wire and then back out at the thickness of the wire. Here you can see the coil being wound on the CNC leg. Currently it's going 50 RPMs and takes about 90 seconds or 45 seconds to go in and 45 seconds to come back out. I didn't want to go too fast because I feared breaking the wire or creating a giant rat's nest. After winding the coil, I carefully wrapped it with electrical tape and then placed it into the steel frame uh, with clear epoxy. I used a clamp and a cardboard tube to prevent it from floating. 
Once the clear 5 minute epoxy cured, I mixed up some gray JB weld and put a top coat to match the original. Before reassembling the entire drill, I tested the magnet and it worked great. With the magnet working at full power, the motor now turns on and works as it should. Now with the drill fully functional, I needed to sort out one last detail. The retention knob for the handle was missing. I looked up this part number, 24011, and they're asking $67.50. I figured I could make one. I turned it from the aluminum bar stock that I had used for the arbor to hold the spool. It was convenient and easy. I then removed the bar stock from the lathe and cut it off on the bandsaw. For the second operation on the CNC lathe, I turned the uh, domed surface of the uh, knob uh, to make it look nice, and I think that it turned out pretty good. Next, I threaded a stainless stud uh, with a retaining clip that will be used to hold it onto the uh, drill. I test fit the knob. It looked really good smooth, but it was really tough to use. On the CNC mill, I machined the grooves or the grippers into the knob. It turned out really nice. After a quick tumble, I assembled it. Looks way better than original. Install the handle. Select the desired rotor broach or annular cutter and the appropriate guide pin and install it in the center. Install the cutter into the spindle. Uh, push up firmly against the spring and then tighten the set screws against the flat of the rotor broach using the provided T-handle. Set the desired RPM. You may have to rock the spindle back and forth for it to slide into gear. Align the spring-loaded center pin with your punch mark. You'll hear it click in when you've got it. Engage the magnet using the green button. Verify that you're still on your punch mark. Apply some cutting oil, turn on the motor, and start drilling. Once the hole is completed, the rotor brooch center pin will press out the slug, leaving a nice perfect hole.